and welcome to another Blast from the Past with Replay Retro. I'm Matt, and on this week's show we take another look at light guns with a trip into the not-so-distant past of the original Xbox. That's right, we'll be looking at its sniper rifle and shotgun controller, the Pelican 2038. But first, to find where it all started, we have to journey back to console gaming's early roots, to the days of the Atari 2600, the ColecoVision, and their various competitors. These systems had managed to bring video gaming into the home, where once it had been the sole domain of badly lit arcades, ringing with the various bleeps, bloops, and the sounds of coins filling the machines. And, as a result, the creepy old man with the crotch-mounted coin changer was in trouble. If people could play these games in their homes, then why would they bother going to the arcades and shoveling their pocket money into these machines for just a short amount of time? The fact is that home gaming was having a devastating impact on the arcades, and one by one they started to close their doors. Something needed to be done to keep gamers coming back. Then, in 1992, the solution appeared, as both Capcom's Street Fighter 2 and Midway's Mortal Kombat were released to the arcades. These popular beat-em-ups offered the chance for arcade-goers to test their skills against other gamers they had never met, long before the arrival of online gaming. Pretty soon, arcades with these titles found the machines having queues of people waiting to play in winner-stays-on style tournaments. More than this though, many people were drawn to the arcades just to watch the masters at work and marvel at the spectacular finishing moves in the games. Sadly though, this reprieve wasn't to last, and before long the home systems caught up as the games came to every console, even Nintendo's family-friendly SNES. To survive, the arcades would have to do much better than that, and do something that the home consoles simply couldn't compete with. The solution came with massively immersive gaming. Games which require some form of complex controls which would be financially out of the reach of home gamers. Games such as the House of the Dead Special Attraction series or Sega's R360 and Psycraft, right up to the popular Konami B Marni series including guitar games, drumming simulators and the massively successful Dancing Stage and Dance Dance Revolution games, all of which played a massive part in reviving the arcades, as once again there were exciting things to do and to see in this arcade environment that simply couldn't be done in the home. Of course, the home consoles don't like to be beaten, and slowly but surely many of these games found their way into the home, with portable versions of the arcade hardware, such as a vast array of various dance mats at different prices and equally different quality levels. Of all of these home ports though, one game in particular was quite surprising, when in 2004 Silent Scope was given its own sniper rifle controller for the Xbox. Assembled from four different components, this light gun is unique from your typical console gun thanks to a sensor mounted just below the sight. This sensor tells the game when the player is holding the, their eye up to the sight and makes the game automatically zoom into sniper scope mode, showing the player a zoomed in area of the screen right where the rifle is pointing. This gives the player the impression that they are actually looking through the scope on a real sniper rifle and does a good job of recreating the immersive effect of the original arcade game, which featured a small LCD screen inside the scope to give this zoomed in effect. Of course, using an LCD screen would have been technically impossible on the home consoles, as well as very expensive for the actual controller, meaning its sales would have been poor anyway. To go with the Pelican light gun, Konami released Silent Scope Complete, a single disc collection of four Silent Scope games, including some interesting bonus material designed to vary the gameplay by taking our sniper out of his perch and seeing him face off against the terrorists hunting him. A final trick up this light gun sleeve was that by removing the sight and barrel it would resemble a shotgun, and the pump action grip boosted this functionality, making it perfect for the shotgun based arcade title House of the Dead 3, which again saw an Xbox release. Of course, it could also be used as a standard light gun, but is far too unwieldy for this in most cases. So, now you know how this fantastic controller came to be. Let's take a closer look at the beast itself. Okay, so here we are with the actual components of the Pelican 2038 light gun. First of all, you have all the plastic components that don't really do anything other than work on the arcade functionality. So you have the scope itself here doesn't magnify at all, you can obviously see that, there's no magnification through there. Remember the magnification is done on the screen. 
Then have the shoulder stock here, which adds onto the back, and the barrel extension. Onto the main unit itself then. You can see you've got a nice long cord to get you a good distance from the Xbox. It also features the Xbox breakaway link. At the business end, you have how the light gun works, obviously, how it sees what's going on on the screen. On the side here, you have some of the normal Xbox control pads buttons. You have your sensitivity for the scope there that tells it at what point it should turn on. Your scope trigger to tell it whether or not to even use the scope sensor. A small control stick here for navigating menus more easily. On the other side, we have the control for the force feedback to switch that on or off. It's a little bit feeble on this gun, I think it may be dying, uh, so I normally have it switched off. Various fire modes, so burst fire or automatic, however you like it. And then more buttons. Trigger, of course, itself here. A nice solid click action on it. And then just under the barrel, you have the pump action which is very good for House of the Dead. It's brilliant to be able to blow some zombies away and then pump action reload. Or, you know, if you're a hardcore movie hero, you can do it one-handed like that. That was probably off the camera as well. Well, that was pointless to me doing that, but you know exactly what I did. Uh, let's see how it all fits together then. So this barrel extension snaps in violently here. Stock doesn't go in that way round, goes in that way round, and the scope jams on the top there. So you can see that when it's actually assembled, this gun is huge. It utterly dwarfs the Sega Menacer or the Super Nintendo Super Scope. It literally dwarfs them. This thing is gigantic. One thing I did forget to point out just there, if you can see it on the camera, I'm not sure how it'll work, is obviously just underneath the scope itself here is where you can see the sensor. So this is the eye sensor. So at the minute, if you're playing and you had the sensitivity set right, it can see that there is nothing in the way of that sensor. So it goes, right, there's no one holding their eye up to this. I won't display the scope. But if you hold your eye up to the scope here, then you are blocking some of the light getting to that sensor. And so it acknowledges that there is something there and presents the on-screen scope. It's a good idea, far cheaper than using the in-scope LCD, uh, and it does work really well in-game, bringing up that zoomed-in image directly in front of the scope. But enough about me telling you how well it works. Let's take a look at the game itself and see how well it works. Right, so this first piece of footage that I'm going to show you is from surround the site Silent and Scope EX, here. which is the most up-to-date Silent Scope Scope game included on the Silent Scope complete disc. We're in place. Distance, wind direction, wind speed, check. Preparations, check. Green light. Roger. So you can see that target as I move captured. the gun around without looking down the scope, the red target on the screen moves around. And I can bring that close to an enemy, then switch to the scope, and pick him off, and I get a nice little card in the top there. To tell me whereabouts I hit that enemy. So that last one was a headshot. So was that one. And you can see that as soon as I put my head up to the scope, that zoom lens appears on the screen. And it is really effective. Obviously the main advice I would give here is to get the gun mostly on target with your enemy, then look down the scope. 
because obviously your scope movement is very slow. He's taken hostages. Bring him down with one shot. Around slowly. So here we go with the boss. This guy's holding a prisoner, so we have to take him out carefully in one shot. So let's get lined up with him. Now, shoot. You're the greatest. Straight through the face. How we roll. This is a news flash. According to information obtained by this station, the terrorists were seized today. Sorry to contact you on such short notice, but we have a classified operation on our hands. Got a little bit of gameplay from Silent Scope 3. A terrorist group we've been tracking. Just to show you that. Is smuggling this is also included on the Silent Scope port. complete disc. Your mission is to neutralize the Along with the X, which we just saw. The and operation also Silent must take Scope place ASAP. So it's a great little package. Or they will get out to sea. That must be stopped at all costs. Skip this. And off we go. Good luck. Just like with EX, it starts off being all about taking your time, picking your moments, and getting the perfect shot. Rushing is a bad idea in this game. You should not rush your shots, take your time over them. Bring it on tight like that. Then look down the side, being careful not to knock it off too much. Pick him off. Line it up, down the side, pick him off. Line it up, down the side, pick him off. Nice long range headshot there. really good results about your percentage and your current rank, your accuracy, those kinds of things. But to me, the best is uh, when it lets you know where you've hit someone. You can, of course, try to fire without using the scope, and you will sometimes get lucky doing that. So here, for example, it's been spotted, so we don't really have time. Take They're going to attack from the flanks and behind. We don't really have a chance right. to take the time. Right. That guy's too far away, I think, for that. So you can still hit people. Obviously sometimes it's not appropriate for you to take your time and you do have to just go out all guns blazing. This is completely different from any other light gun experience just because of this scope. The fact that you're taking on your enemies from much further away. It's much more, it feels at least like there's much more skill involved. There probably actually isn't, but it does feel like there is. And you do get a real kick out of it when you pull off a really long range headshot. Or shoot him in the balls, it's entirely up to you. <laughs> now unfortunately Cobra, this boss fight you isn't like the other This guy we actually I told you I'll survive to have my do have to fight. Feel fight my back. reborn power. I tried to beat him earlier on today and I didn't manage it, so let's see if I can do it now. Wasted shot. Oh, 
problem is that when he hits you, it causes you obviously to lose your shot. Oh, that was a big one. Oh yeah, you can hit him before he even gets up, so actually maybe it's a good idea to not try and use the scope here. Seems that lucky shots are the best way to do this one. So you can see I've now taken off the stock, the sight, and the barrel, uh, turning this into a shotgun, nice pump action shotgun there. Or actually I can do that now. Yeah. Run! Run! We're playing House of the Dead 3 on survival mode, which is what we're gonna do right now. I feel so badass reloading like that. Of course, reloading like that is probably not doing me very good as far as wasting time is concerned. I'm probably going to get eaten while doing that. What are the badass ways to hold a shotgun out there? Oh yeah. Everyone's death be in vain. Hurry. House of the Dead, of course, we've all played surely at some point in the arcade. You know the story by now. Lots of zombies coming at you in different ways. You need to make your way through these on rails track until everything but you is dead. And for all its sameness, it is a really enjoyable game. I could play this for a long time. In fact, I probably will. When the camera turns off, I'm going to keep playing them. How many of these things are there? There's no doubting that the Pelican 2038 is an impressive controller and does a great job of bringing the arcade experience into the home. And while the silent scope gameplay can be a little bit repetitive, it's certainly worth a playthrough. These days, the light gun and the game can be picked up for under £30 from eBay, and at a car boot or jumble sale, you could find a real bargain. In my opinion, it's definitely worth trying to pick them up at these prices, but you need to remember that this will not work on modern LCD or plasma televisions, as like most retro light guns, it requires a CRT-style television to work so make sure you're actually going to be able to use it before you hunt one down. That's it from me for another week, but don't forget to join me again next Sunday for another retro gaming review. Until then, you can of course keep up to date with all the latest news on the show by following at ReplayRetro on Twitter. 
And if you haven't already, then don't forget to subscribe so that you'll know as soon as we release a new episode. Thanks for joining me on this look at one of the more inventive light guns out there, and I'll see you again next week on Replay Retro. I promised mom that I'd bring him home. Let's go. As if her mom just let her out to fight zombies. Ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs>